Let's get it on. All right, y'all. Haven't done one of these in a minute, and this one came across my desk here, and it just so happened to have Seahawks in the title, and I'm thinking, like, what? <laughs> this is a crazy one right here. Now, I want to know what you guys think about this. This is CBS Sports and some cat named Josh Edwards here just doing the little mock draft thing here. So, just killing a little time here because I saw this and I was like, I don't know about this one right here. This would be kind of crazy, kind of crazy here. But as we see here, he has Bryce Young going number one overall to the Houston Texans. Will Anderson comes across, right, the screen right here. That would be my number one choice, I believe, for Seattle. If somehow they can end up with a Will Anderson I would say 1A, 1B. It will be between Will Anderson and this dude right here that I cover on a weekly basis, Jalen Carter from the University of Georgia right here. He is a game changer. I said before the season, Georgia may still have the very best defensive player in the country despite losing however many players they lost. What was it, five or six first-round draft picks just on defense? Last year, coming out of that national championship game, yes, Jalen Carter is that good. I thought he was the most talented defensive player with all those guys last year. So the quarterback, he has the flush towards those defensive ends. So think about that, man. I'm telling you right now, you see this kid right here on this particular play. Now, this is just a hustle play. You'll see him take on the meat of the offense, uh, sift and lurk for the quarterback and then redirect to the sideline and then hand out some of that prison loving. Check this out. Look at him. Keep in mind right here, the 6 3 3 10 Daco. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, snap. Who's that? Chris Rodriguez? Oh, yes, 310-pound interior defensive lineman is covering ground like that, laying out running backs. Let's be real here. He sent that boy to the upper room. You know what the upper room is? I know you know what the upper room is. The upper room when Jesus sent that boy to the upper room with Jesus. One more again. Look. Taking on to me. Remember, he's taking on a lot of double teams because they will play him at a shade all the way out to a five technique. He can do it all. And Jacob, taxidermy the man, right? Chris Rodriguez, he was never the same again. If that is Chris Rodriguez. Whoever that is was never the same again, right? Come on, man. I absolutely love this trench work, man. Give me a salute if you love that trench work too. Look at the slipperiness. I think that's what makes a great interior player. Obviously, they have the brawn. They're going to they're gonna tie up linemen, right? They're going to play it within the meat. Pause. They're going to play within the meat of the offensive line, but being slippery. Look at this guy. Had a three technique, presses the A gap here, and gets there damn near without being touched. Look at this. That's incredible. <laughs> People who have those type of players at the next level, they're usually the guys you find deep in the playoffs. Think about it. But look at this. Man comes off with excellent pad level. I'm not sure what this dude did. He must have just closed his eyes and was scared. <laughs> right? He closed his eyes or something like that. He completely whiffs. Look how skinny Jalen Carter gets. Look at the dexterity there. Look at the adroitness. That's before he, they could even hand the ball off. This man is already in the backfield like a grizzly bear. And look at it. Oh. Uh, parallel down the line of scrimmage, driving that man to the rest of the pack there. That is some fantastic work right there. One more time, full speed. Ooh, you imagine getting a handoff and that dude is right in your face right when you get the handoff? Mm. So, yeah, Jalen Carter, you could play him from a two-eye all the way out to a six technique. He is definitely the type of cat that Seattle had back in the day on the interior linemen, as, as far as the interior linemen go, uh, because he's so versatile and he's so explosive and so ferocious, just so ferocious. So, with that being said, though, they went – Right here, C.J. Stroud. So C.J. Stroud is my guy, right? C.J. Stroud is my number one quad. Yeah, I would say C.J. Well, hold on. You know what I'm saying? I ain't doing that, right? We got time to go. Football still to go here. We got the draft process and everything to unfold. As of right now, 
CJ Stroud is my guy and has been since I first saw that cat. I got uh, tons of material up on the channel dealing with CJ Stroud. Dr. Stroud is what I call him. He's a surgeon general, very much in the mode of a Geno Smith. I am, as a matter of fact, he is essentially Geno Smith. He is a pocket passer with adequate athleticism. He's not going to wow you with his athleticism, but he can detach from the pocket, and that man can extend plays that way, but he's a pinpoint accurate thrower, can make quick decisions, and I think that he would fit this offense very much like Geno Smith does, but that's me thinking it. Outside of the Molotov cocktail type drawings that he's throwing, these type of throws, you have to have the arm strength to get it there on a rope. So you can't use body English because it has to be on a rope, meaning it has to be accurate. So if you're looking at something like this, right, look at the ease of motion, the over-the-top delivery, not super elongated like his predecessor, right? We'll get to that in a second here. But you can see right here, if you have a lollipop arm and somebody's coming out of a curl route, ask me how I know, baby. I've been there. I've picked off passes like this before. You have a throw that long and somebody has a lolly lollipop arm, is made to order for you as a defender. Obviously, this man has that that Omicron separation right there, right? He's six feet at all times right there, but it doesn't matter. If you had a lollipop arm, the cornerback could get back into it, and that be that, right? But check out it from, from this angle right here. You can really see the ball cutting the wind here and how long of a throw this is. That's hard. Right on a rope. Right on a rope. Now, look at where his feet is, right? Right there, you got that rear foot, the the um the guide foot right the guide foot is off the ass right but his drive foot is on the ass driving off that back foot look at the spiral look how long the throw is but look how quickly it gets there that opens up ohio state's offense i think ohio state has a chance to do huge things next year ohio state could very well have a heisman winner and be the national champions next year i wouldn't bet against it you can already see it starting to take shape here this time, Chris Olave running an out route, which is also made to order. Anything past the numbers with an opposite hash throw is made to order if you're a defender, if you're on your A game, and that quarterback has a lollipop arm. It's almost nothing they could do about it, which is why you don't see a lot of opposite hash throws, or you do see them depending on the arm talent of the quarterback here. So my man, C.J. Stroud, the surgeon, he has no problems with that. Look out here. One, two, three, get it out. Yaka putting lead on targets like you wouldn't believe. Check this out. Slow motion. One, two, three. Plant, drive, mechanics on point. Love this kid's mechanics. Look, my man's not even out of his route yet. So it's more of an anticipatory throw yet. I'm sorry, he's not out of his transition yet. So more of an anticipatory throw. You can tell they have a great rapport. And he gets it there isolation to the field side. You can do that with your quarterback, man. The world is your oyster. So when you talk to scouts, if you've been privileged to be in the business like I am, have coaching friends and known scouts and, and, and analysts and people like that, they always talk about opposite hash throws, and they'll now talk about deep digs, right? In breaking routes in the middle of the field, you have a lollipop arm, that's also made to order as well. Now, this one is not an opposite hash throw, but you see the degree of difficulty on this one. We'll just run it. Back to the basket play action fake. See him hitch up. Oh, look at, oh my God. <laughs> you can't really see it from there. We'll run it from this one, and you can see what I'm talking about. Actually, let's see what's the bare bones of this. Okay, so we got pistol weak here. They're faking the split zone. So back to the basket play action fake here. Roll out, nothing there, and he has to get it to Garrett Wilson, who's running towards the sideline. Look at him, detach. But look, he didn't, he couldn't get nothing into it. They were bearing down on him, and the shit was scary too. If you look at the hit, oh, could have torn his ACL right there going that low. I hate when I see that man, even if it's my own team, like the Terrapins are. I hate to see that to another quarterback there especially the surgeon here. But you can see right here, look at this. He can't drive off of this. Not at all. This is an all-arm throw, all-arm throw pretty much off of his front foot. Can't even step into it. Look, he can sense the hit right there, and he ends up being horizontal, right? 
throws that bad boy, but look at it and where it goes. It is absolutely perfect. Oh, uh, led on targets, absolutely accurate with it and everything like that. This kid is amazing. Garrett Wilson is amazing. I don't know that for sure. We do not know. Most quarterbacks fail coming out of college, if you haven't noticed. So Geno Smith is already doing it. But this guy goes on to say, Geno Smith is playing at a high level, but I think out of taking a top quarterback talent in favor of a signal caller having his best season at 32 years old is not a strategy I can get behind. Smith may do enough to be the team starter for another year, but it's unreasonable to think that he can play at this level for five more years, plan for the future. There's some validity in what he's saying, and there's also some stupidity in what he's saying because Geno Smith has not taken any type of damage, and he's playing in a system in a team, right? The team infrastructure alone is better than 90% of the teams out there. So that right there, they have a plan. They know what they're doing out there, and he seems to fit it to a T. All you have to do is surround him with the proper parts and you can get this high level play out of him for at least the next five years because the guy just doesn't have any wear and tear on him. And he doesn't play a a a type of game like he's not running around like a running back like Justin Fields. That man is is sitting there dissecting and picking you apart and he will detach and then protect himself. Why can't he do that for another five years? And we've seen guys like Aaron Rodgers and these guys playing into their 40s. Aaron Rodgers should be good for the next three-something years. He's already 39 years old, I believe. Tom Brady, not to say Geno Smith is as good as those guys or anything like that, but if we're just talking about your physical makeup, he should be able to do this, man. He has not played just like Steve Young. He was able to play in a scheme in San Francisco that fit his skill set, and he was able to get – five six years at the end of his career to be a hall of famer come on man you cannot approach geno smith like that but if you're being pragmatic in your approach he is 32 years old and it's his first season being very successful cj stroud is essentially that man 6 3 2 18 that's probably exactly what geno is and you could possibly have that guy for the next however many years it's a gamble and a risk but i wouldn't know it that's my guy right there if Jalen Carter is available, you have to take him. I don't know how this damn Will Levis shit keeps popping up. I'm going to have something on that before. I'm going I'm to I'm cry foul on that. If you've watched this guy this year, there's no way that you're doing anything. I'm going to leave that alone. I, I'll attack it another time there. Not to disrespect Will Levis or anything. I'm just going by what I see on the field. <laughs> what? Come on, man. Anyway, uh, Brian Brzee here. There's another cat. If you can have Brian Brzee on your team, man, Seattle could just be that much better, right? And Seattle could trade out of this, right? Seattle's not a team in dire straits, as as of right now, at least. They could trade back, accumulate picks. This is where you pick QBs at. So if you are in the top five and you're not looking for a QB, you trade back. You help somebody out, and they help you out. One hand washes the other, both wash the face. Look at this right here. Miles Murphy. That's another guy. An edge player right there. Miles Murphy is stupendous. He would definitely be that type of versatile player. He could be an anchor edge player. He's 275 pounds, but he moves like uh, uh, like he's an outside linebacker in a 3-4 naturally. Straight up. So there's a lot of great, potentially great players out here in this particular draft there. I think that will come up. People are going to, oh, I forgot, Seattle have their own pick. As of right now, their own pick. Look at this. Hmm. People are getting mad when I say they should probably think about drafting a receiver, right? And then these, this guy right here actually gives them a receiver from North Carolina, Josh Downs, who is essentially Tyler Lockett. He's a Tyler Lockett type. I wouldn't want that. If I was y'all... I would want a bigger receiver, more in the mode of a DK Metcalf. If something happened to DK or something like that, you would still have that type of player on your team. It would be like having Mike Williams and Keenan Allen on the same team. And obviously, Lockett has a, a long way to go in his career as well. At least that's what y'all tell me. Uh, you can still have him and, and Eskridge and some of these guys as well. So, I mean, that's just me. If some of y'all think Eskridge can step up and be that guy. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. But this is a 
receiver heavy draft, franchise receiver type draft here, you can get some dudes. Either us Jackson Smith and Jigba. That'd be crazy. Suppose they got CJ Stroud and Jackson Smith and Jigba. <laughs> that would be hard. But man, a lot of guys up in this particular draft. Tell me which way that you would like to see him go. Here's one I'm going to go ahead and throw out there as well. I'd like to see Seattle go for another high-level running back. And this is the exact guy I was thinking about. This is why this just crossed my mind here. I was going to do something on it, but it's probably too early to be doing that type of stuff. Jameer Gibbs paired with Kenneth Walker is money. Y'all know me. I love my man Rashad McFadden, right? I call him Rashad McFadden. But Rashad Penny reminds me of Darren McFadden. He was playing just like Darren McFadden in... You can't stick with him. I'm sorry. As much as I like him, and I've been propping him up, and I was telling everybody what he's going to do, and he was making me look like a genius, he's just too injury prone. But having a speed demon guy who can flip the field, a smaller back like a Jameer Gibbs, DJ Dallas and Travis Homer, pretty good backs there, but they lack elite speed. This guy has home run hitting ability just like Kenneth Walker. So imagine being able to hand it off to both of your backs and they get you 80-yard touchdowns. Scary, scary. But let me know what you guys think about that, man. CJ Straub? That's hard. All right, y'all. But it's your boy, Mid-Atlantic Murph, a.k.a. Do not comment on my non-Seattle content talking about Seattle all the time. Please stop doing that, man. I'm not a Seattle fan. I don't know how many times we got to go through this. I don't know. Is this becoming a thing or something where people got to come in and say that I'm a fan of something that I'm not? And I'm telling you as a grown man that I'm just not? I'm not. So, Let's not do that anymore and stop commenting on my non-Seattle stuff, trying to make everything tied back to Seattle. Shit is mad annoying, all right? But other than that, man, much love to you guys out there. Happy Thanksgiving. Salute. Strike the band. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.